AI, machine learning, and deep learning. I'm 100% certain that everyone has heard these words thousands of times in the last two years. But for most people, it's like black magic. Because what kind of voodoo spells do you need to use to create ChatGPT or this eerie website? Well, I'm neither a computer scientist nor a mathematician, and you probably aren't either, but I can tell you that it is way simpler than it sounds. But before we start, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed and liked this video. Write black magic in the comments if AI is like quantum physics to you, and I guarantee you'll delete that comment after watching this video. With that being said, let's learn what neural networks even are. First of all, don't think of AI as something advanced like quantum physics. It's just a computer program that uses math and statistics to find correlations in data, and then, based on these correlations, output the desired answer. You can imagine an AI model as a guitar. The guitar is the AI itself, your hand is the data input to the model, and the sound is the output. Now, let's look at real AI. This is a neural network. The nodes you see are called neurons. For now, think of them as containers for numbers. Each neuron is connected to another, and every connection has a value corresponding to it. We call that value a weight. The first column of the neural network represents input neurons. As the name implies, these are the neurons where you input data. The last column, or more commonly layer, contains neurons responsible for the output. The layers in between are called the hidden layers. This is where all the AI magic happens. And that's pretty much it. The neural network has been demystified. Now let's make our own neural network. As you can see, our neural network changed, and now it looks way less complicated. This neural network is called the perceptron, and it was the first neural network ever created. Notice that two new elements have popped up here. This one is called the activation function. Picture it as an element that converts data from the output neuron into something more human-friendly. Now we need to set our function. Let's say if the number in this neuron is below zero, the activation function will output off, and if it's higher than zero, it will output on. And here we have our activation function. Now let's look at this element. It is called the bias. You'll see its use later when we start to train our neural network. Now let's choose data for our neural network to train on. I want my model to control my AC unit based on temperature and humidity outside, so we'll obviously need temperature and humidity data, but we also need the state of the AC in these conditions. Is it on or off? This way, our neural network can actually learn. The last thing we need to do is replace on and off with something more math friendly. Minus one for off and one for on, and our data is ready. Let the machine learning begin. The first thing we need to do is set our weights and biases to some random values. So let's set this weight to seven, this weight to minus two, and our bias to, let's say, five. The whole training process is based on tweaking these values so that after all the math operations, the answer is correct. But what math operations will we be using? Let me pass the first row to our model to show you. Each input value is multiplied by the weight corresponding to it. Then we add these two values, and we also add our bias on top of that. After that, we pass our final value through our activation function, and that's pretty much everything. As you can see, the first row is classified correctly, so let's check if our randomly picked weights are correct by doing this for every row in the training set. As you can see, the results are completely off, so let's start the training. We need to pick the first value from our dataset that was classified incorrectly, because we are learning from mistakes. Then, we take the value of the correct answer, in our example minus one, because the AC unit should be turned off, and multiply it by data from this neuron. Then we multiply everything by 0.3. This value is called the learning rate. If it's low, our learning will be slower but more precise. If it's higher, it will be faster but less precise. Then we add the output of this operation to our weight. Now let's do the same thing with the second weight, but with value from our second neuron. Now let's adjust our bias. We simply need to multiply the correct answer by our learning rate and add it to the bias. And that's it, we trained our model, or did we? Let's run our data through the model again. And nothing really changed. That's normal when it comes to training AI. We just need to adjust weights and bias and test our model again. And from what I can see, it will take some time. So let me just... Two hours later. And here we have our working AI. As you can see, the correct weights are minus 8.2 and 4, and our bias is minus 1.1. So now that our model is working, we need to test it on data that it hasn't seen before. So let's start with quite a hot day, 30 degrees Celsius and 70% humidity. And correct. Now let's check a colder day, 20 degrees Celsius and 40% humidity. And it's correct again. In the last one, maybe let's check a hot day again to be certain, 28 degrees Celsius and 80% humidity. And it's correct again. We pass the testing with zero mistakes. Of course, keep in mind that our model is really, really simple. And in real life scenarios, AI models often use millions of rows of data. But hey, we did our own AI. That's something to be proud of. And that's the end of our video. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you in the next one. Take care.